Hi, hello and welcome to another episode by Fab Movie. I want to welcome all the new subscribers and the old subscribers as well. And if you just happen to stumble upon this video, welcome to my channel. Consider subscribing if you are new. Um, I'm coming at you from the Xinjiang airport. Uh, I'm on my way back home after finishing the um, documentary that I was shooting for some state media. So um, today um, I will go over uh, some of the issues uh, with uh, Amnesty International's report, the latest one on Xinjiang. Um, I must say that I started reading the report after seeing a, a tweet by Gray Fox, who wants me to call him for Gray Fox, uh, detailing many of the inaccuracies and problems with the premises, the data, and the conclusions of this report. So I would like to thank Gray Fox for allowing me to use some of his research for, for this video. Um, okay, so on the report, the surprises start with the title of it. Uh, it's called China's Mice and Tournament Torture and Prosecution of Muslims in Xinjiang, which it is quite interesting because it avoids the use of the words uh, genocide, so they don't have to deal with that, or Uyghur, which is interesting. Instead, they list three crimes against humanity, and they allege that this involved the entire Muslim community, which is also quite interesting. Now, the first thing that we need to remember is that not all Muslims are Uyghur, and not all Uyghurs are Muslims. In addition to this, not all Muslim Uyghurs live in Xinjiang. Now, the truth of the matter is that most of the people interviewed by these people from the report are not Uyghur, but Kazakh, which could explain the title, of course. So, how does that square with any other report out there accusing China of genocide against Uyghurs? Now, Gray Fox also asked a very interesting question. Why aren't Muslims being persecuted, persecuted and tortured outside of Xinjiang then? Now, the next thing to, to consider is the admission by Amnesty International that this report is actually not an investigation. It's only a compilation of alleged crimes. But more importantly, as it is also admitted by uh, Amnesty International itself, is that none of those witnesses that they interviewed were identified. They all use pseudonyms. Now think about this. In any legal case, which this is not a legal case, of course, they are, the accused deserves to know the identity of the accuser. This fact alone to me is remarkable. Now, let us remember that with this report and the fake Uyghur tribunal uh, that we saw early in June uh, in London, what they try to do is, number one, get media attention and try to rally up popular support for additional sanctions and bans on China. And number two, they try to call for fair trials. But how could you have a fair trial, trial when none of the witnesses can be identified? How's that fair? Now, another aspect that requires attention is, is the actual definition of crimes against humanity. It's, it's a long definition, but I'm going to start with one point. The one that's uh, about the accusation of arbitrary imprisonment. One of the requirements for any crime against humanity case is proof that there's no internationally accepted legal basis for the imprisonment of a certain group or population. However, in the background section of the report itself, Amnesty International reports um, all the different anti-terrorism policies and actions by authorities in China to stop these terrorist attacks that were taking place. These actions are in accordance with international law. Therefore, they do not constitute a crime against humanity. Incidentally, Amnesty International never mentions Etim, the terrorist group. I think it was a mistake for the United States government uh, in 2002-2003 uh, 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 designating this obscure organization, East Turkestan Islamic Movement, as a terrorist organization. And if Allah wills it that they continue to support China, then we ask Allah to destroy those leaders and anybody who supports them. I ask Allah um, to destroy the Communist Party of China. I ask Allah to destroy Xi Jinping and his family. The video also featured young Uyghur school children shouting threats to the Chinese government.
هنا نحيا بين أهلنا وإخواننا من المهاجرين والأنصار تجمعنا بهم رابطة الدين التي هي أقوى من رابطة الدم Amnesty International never mentions Etim, the terrorist group, at all in this report, which I find interesting again. Now, the next accusation is torture. Amnesty International reports interviewing about a dozen plus first hand accounts, some of which come from journalists, which again, do we trust? And some of which have been proven to be liars, like Tursun Aisi Yawudun. <laughs> She has changed the version of events at least three times uh, in the last three years. However, Amnesty International claims without evidence, like many others have done, that there are millions of Uyghur detained in Xinjiang. And when I say millions, it just gets a little bit funny. Take a look at this Twitter account, a blue tick, CJ Werleman. He keeps posting increasing numbers of imprisoned Uyghur. Some numbers reaching up to 9 million Uyghur. That's three quarters of the Uyghur population. How does this buffoon get to kid his blue tick on Twitter? But, but anyway, let's, let's get back to the torture plan, okay? The definition of crimes against humanity requires the incidence of torture to be widespread and systematic. If you do not challenge any of the first accounts that they talk about, which no defense lawyer would ever do in any court, you challenge those. And if you take the lowest number of alleged Uyghur imprisonment, which is one million, that means uh, a dozen out of a million. That means 0.012% of imprisoned Uyghurs have come forward to Amnesty International with claims of torture. How does that mean widespread or systematic? You tell me. Now here's the thing, I'm not saying that there hasn't been torture. I don't know this. There may have been isolated cases. But what I'm trying to say to you is that based on the report that, that we are trying to dissect here by Amnesty International, it proves that there is no data to support the claim of systematic and widespread torture. It just, it, how could you bring a case of crimes against humanity when you have 0.0012%? That's an anomaly, that's not widespread. Why do you bring to the table allegations of crimes against humanity when, when your book itself, your, your report presents evidence that you do not meet the definition? Now, the third accusation is persecution. Now, in the definition of persecution in crimes against humanity, there are two elements that are required to classify it as a crime against humanity. First is a general intent, and the other is a specific mental element of intent. Amnesty International does not address any of this in their report. So if you don't even try to present evidence of intent, be it general or specific, how could you bring forth the claim of crimes against humanity on accounts of persecution? So that's what I wanted to say with regards to uh, Amnesty International. Now, there is a new report also posted or, or printed or released by uh, Adrian Sens that this time is peer-reviewed. Now, when there's a paper that's peer-reviewed, it, it gets a score as to how influential this report is. Well, this report is getting one of the lowest numbers you could possibly think of. But anyway, what I want to talk about today is um, when SENSE addresses um, uh, I, IUD insertions, he has done something pretty sneaky. He's gone and changed one word in his report that has huge significance. He changed uh, uh, the net IUD insertions uh, for new IUD insertions. So you might not understand what this is about. So let me give you an analogy. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's talk about driver's licenses. Let's say that in a country, right, uh, everybody uh, needs a driver's license to drive, right? But let's say that there is a group in one particular area that are giving a privilege and they're told you don't need to have a driver's license to, to drive, okay? So everybody else has a driver's license, but these people don't need one. So what 
is net driver licenses uh, issuing. Yeah, what is that number? It's basically all the new driver's licenses that are issued each year minus the number of driver's licenses that are revoked each year because get old or people die or whatever. So that the difference between the new ones that are issued and the ones that are revoked gives you the net um, number of driver's licenses issued each year. Now what happens, for example, if one day the government says, okay, now we want this group that were given a right and a privilege not to apply for driver's licenses, what if we change that? Now everybody in the country has to have a driver's license, right? So what's going to happen to this group? All of a sudden they're going to start to apply for driver's licenses, right? And the number of new driver's licenses is going to increase, right, overall. And the number of revoked driver licenses is going to stay the same. So the difference, the net issuing of driver licenses is going to increase because you have a larger number of new driver licenses and the number of revoked number uh, of, of licenses is going to remain about the same. So this is exactly what took place with IUDs. For many, many years, minorities, Uyghur included, were not bound by the one-child policy. They didn't have to follow China's family planning uh, regulations, so they, could, they didn't have to use IUDs. But since 2015, when the one-child policy changed, and the, the, one of the main changes was that now minorities had to abide by the new regulations on family planning, that means that they had to start using IUDs. They never had to before, but now they needed to start using IUDs. So these numbers have been increasing greatly, affecting both the new, um, the new IUD insertions and the net IUD insertions, because now they need to use them, but the ones that are being removed remains about the same. So that's the thing. Uh, it's a change of policy in family planning that uh, apply to every single person in China, not to minorities. The only change is that, okay, now minorities have to do the same as everybody else. That's where the numbers are changing. So to think that that is genocide, it's, it's stupid. It's just everybody, I mean, if that's genocide, then what was happening to the Han population before was also genocide. It doesn't make any sense. But to, to put this to rest, the new China census has come out and is showing that well the population of Uyghurs in Xinjiang is increasing so that's it case closed what else are we talking about all right guys that's all the time we have for today thank you very much for watching this video and as always if you liked it give it a thumbs up and if you like the content on my channel then consider subscribing to it if you do that don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out if you want to support the work that I do remember to hit the link in the description down below to buy me a cup of coffee and if you're here in China, you can use the QR code right here to buy me a cup of coffee on WeChat. And well, until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.